Alright, so I want to do an update on this idea of Jesus Christ reigning a thousand years. I want to take a look at what this individual has to say. Um, you see that I, I did an update uh, a day ago. I think it was a day ago, two days ago, whatever. Um, and so let's take a There's a couple people that have come out since then. And the title of this one right here, The Millennial Reign of Christ, it, that's not in the Bible at all. all right? And the idea of Jesus reigning for a thousand years is totally unbiblical. And, uh, you know, there are times I just can't help but wonder if these people have even read the Bible. And it's obvious to me that they are getting this teaching from a false teacher. They're not getting it from the Bible because the idea is not supported in the Bible at all. Luke chapter 1, you cannot contradict this verse right here. This verse alone destroys the idea of Jesus reigning a thousand years. Completely wipes it out. Completely wipes it out. Just like if we go to... Oh... I forget already. Let's go. There it is. Yeah. the You've heard of the serpent's seed, right? The idea that the serpent had sex with Eve, that a snake, a reptile, had sex with Eve and conceived, and Eve bare, or had a Cain, right? The serpent seed doctrine. You know, I'm sure you do. I, it's weird that it's so popular, but everybody knows, and it's it's just so stupid. And I think that's part of the reason why it's so popular is because it's so stupid. But Genesis 4 verse 1 completely nullifies that doctrine. And Adam knew Eve, his wife, and she conceived and bare Cain and said, I have gotten a man from the Lord. Not from the serpent, a man from the Lord. So Adam knew Eve, his wife. That means they mated. And they had a son. She got pregnant, had a son, and it was Cain. So that completely nullifies the idea that the serpent had sex with Eve, and and uh, that's how Cain was born. All right, stupid idea. But that's I'm telling you, a lot of people do preach that. As stupid as it is, that there are people out there teaching it. So also, Luke chapter 1, verse 33, completely nullifies in the same way that Genesis 4.1 nullifies the idea of the serpent seed doctrine. Luke 1, verse 33, nullifies the idea that Jesus reigns for a thousand years. There is no millennial reign of Christ. It's not in the Bible. Not anywhere. Not, not in Revelation 20. Not anywhere at all. All right, so let's be fair. Let's try to listen to what this guy has to say. Welcome back to Tuesday Night Bible Study. Tonight we're going to pick back up in chapter 20 of Revelation. Uh, we ended last Tuesday at verse 4, oh, and that's actually where I'm going to start back, and I'm going to tie it in. We're going to go through verses 4 through 6 tonight, and I'm going to try to break them down as much as I can. A little review prior to when we opened up chapter 20. The Bible tells us an angel having the key to the bottomless pit, which is a pit in hell. It's called the bottomless pit, or a pit where Satan will be cast, and his angels and demons are following. And of course, this angel chained Satan and cast him into this bottomless pit, and set a seal upon him that he would not deceive the nations no more. Till the millennial reign was over, which was the thousand year millennial reign. The Bible tells us here he'll be loose for a season. We discussed that a little bit. Why would he be loose for a season? Uh, we already discussed that. We've talked about that. Uh, also, uh, Daniel chapter 7, verses 9 through 14, tells us that Satan is and his demons and angels are also cast in with him. Uh, at this point in time, I gotta think about this. Uh, did I talk about that? 
yesterday, I, I don't remember. Alright, um... No, I didn't. What was that I was talking about yesterday? Oh, uh, Daniel 2. I, I forgot. Okay, doesn't matter. Time. The millennial reign would begin. That will be the saints of God. That would be from Adam's time all the way through the millennial. Now, how do I know that? Because the Bible here tells us that. Wait, hold on a second. I got to try to pick up on what he's selling here. Uh, at this point in time, the millennial reign would begin. That will be the saints of God. That would be from Adam's time all the way through the millennial. Now, the millennial will be from the beginning all the way through the millennial. The millennial will be from the beginning all the way through the millennial. How do I know that? Because the Bible here tells us that. So I'm going to read uh, verses 4 through 6. All right, just in case you're not familiar with what I teach, I'm telling you, this thousand year period began with um, the essentially the birth of baby Jesus and it will end at the return of our Lord Jesus Christ. Six, and we're going to break them down and talk about them a little bit and then I'm going to pull some scripture up out of the Old and New Testaments to go along with this millennial reign. What's the purpose of the millennial reign? When Christ returns, he's going to set his kingdom up. Uh, again, this was taught in one of my lessons earlier last year. Hey, oh, come on, man. What was the purpose of it? Uh, don't explain the purpose of it. Let's shift the conversation and ignore it, the purpose of it. Now, of course, the purpose of this millennial reign if you will is that we might be saved that we might have faith in the Lord Jesus Christ that we might believe and have eternal life everlasting life that we might be saved that's the purpose Jesus died on the cross offered his body as a sacrifice for our sins Right? And so now through him we might be saved if we believe. Uh, I think it's part of the millennial reign. Uh, it's one of the uh, premillennial uh, reigns uh, lessons. And when Christ come on the scene, all right, let's go yeah. back, back to John the Baptist prior to Christ. Is he explaining why the purpose of this zombie reign? John the Baptist was preaching the kingdom. Now, when Christ comes on the scene, the Jewish people at that point in time thought Jesus was going to conquer the world then, set his kingdom up in <clears throat> Jerusalem, and rule with a rod of iron. What's a rod of iron? That means it's going to be his way. There's no discussion. Yeah, that that's true today, buddy. There is no other way but through Jesus Christ. He's laid it down, whether you accept it or not. He is the only way. It's going to be, he's going to rule the heavens and the earth. Now, and he rules the heaven and the earth right now. Guarantee it. That's, there's no way to wiggle around it. He owns this place. He controls it. He made this place and he can burn this place. That's why I believe that the Jewish people rejected Christ. Majority of them is They rejected Christ because they did not believe. Simple. Because they expected the Old Testament saint, the Old Testament or scrolls or whatever you want to call it. Um, the Bible? Predicted Christ would come on the scene. Christ did come on the scene. Also, the Old Testament, uh, all 
also predicted his death for her own resurrection. Well, is this why? Is this the purpose of the thousand years? Or are you ignoring it? Just talking until we forget about it. They were looking for a ruler at that time. Roman ruled the world. A Rome ruled the world. So, right there. That that's true, and that's what I keep telling people in regards to Revelation 17 and regards to Daniel and the four beasts the first three beasts are mentioned the fourth beast is not mentioned but we it's mentioned in the New Testament in Luke chapter 2 when it says Caesar uh, went out there went out a decree from Caesar Augustus that the whole world should be taxed by this verse we should we know that the fourth beast is the Roman Empire they were expecting Christ to take over them. Thank the Lord he didn't. Thank the Lord he opened it up. He died on the cross. He rose again the third day and he opened it up for the church age. That's what we're in right now. It's called the church age. Now, the I don't call it the church age, man. Because, I mean, the church age, if you want to call it that, then you also have to call it the millennial age, the thousand year age. All right? I'm not into dispensations, man. Because what is what does it take to get saved? Faith. That's never changed. There's not a new way of being saved. Time of the Gentiles. Anyone that's not a Jewish person is a Gentile. And it's opened up. Now when will that close? Well, well again, you know, you could argue well, I don't want to get into this, man. Get it you could argue that there were non-Jewish people being saved. There was a difference in the Old Testament because in the Old Testament there was one nation of God and God watched over that nation. And today the nation of God is open up to everybody. But I don't want to get into that. Let's, let's get up to par here. It, had nothing, it never had anything to do with flesh and blood. In verse 4. First of all, Christ will return, and he will return in the clouds. All right? When he returns in the clouds, this will be prior to the start of the tribulation. He will rapture his church. Wait. <clears throat> what, hold on a second. What, what did he say? When he returns in the clouds, this will be prior to the start of the tribulation. He okay. So this is... This is insane. Uh, you see, you hear this all the time. It, and no matter how many times I say it, it does not make it true. I'm just going to end it right there. I mean, if you can't get this simple fact right, then <laughs> if you can't get one piece of the puzzle right, then the, your whole puzzle is no good. For then shall there be great tribulation. Verse 21. Alright. Now, if that's not enough, let's go to verse 29. Immediately after the tribulation, then comes Jesus in the clouds of heaven. Immediately after the tribulation. So you got the tribulation, and then you got Jesus coming in the clouds of heaven. And we got essentially the rapture. Right, the great sound of a trumpet is the end of the world. And the angels gather together the elect. Those of us that are saved. Those of us that are born of God. Those of us that believe in the Lord Jesus Christ. We are saved. First the dead in Christ. And then those of us which are alive and remain are lifted up with them. And we are changed in the twinkling of an eye. And the enemy is gathered at our feet. Till I, till I make thine enemies thy footstool. And fire comes down from heaven. Or fire comes down from God out of heaven and devours them. So um, I shall put enmity between thee and thy seed. And between her seed and your seed. And again I get that verse wrong. I will put enmity between thee and thy woman. Or between thee and the woman. What is that verse? What is that verse? I will put enmity between thee and the woman. 
and between thy seed and her seed, it shall bruise thy head, and thou shalt bruise his heel. All right, so we go back to Matthew 24, immediately after the tribulation. So you have the tribulation, and then you have Jesus coming in the clouds of heaven, and you have those of us that are saved are lifted up to meet the Lord in the air. The enemy at our feet is destroyed. And then the new city, the city of God, the city of Jerusalem, the new Jerusalem will come down from heaven. There will be no more pain, no more sorrow, no more suffering, no more death. All those things will be done away with. And uh, there will be new heaven, new earth, and all that. No more sin. No more zombies. There is no zombie reign. And that sounds fantastic, but it's not in the Bible. Alright. When he returns in the clouds, this will be prior to the start of the tribulation. It's unbelievable. Immediately after the tribulation, Jesus comes. What this guy just said is a lie. In the clouds, all right? When he returns in the clouds, this will be prior to... When he returns in the clouds, it'll be prior to the tribulation. Even though the Bible specifically mentions immediately after the tribulation, Jesus comes in the clouds of heaven they shall see the Son of Man coming in the clouds of heaven can anybody get it right it's um it's unbelievable it's incredible that people have to spin everything and avoid the truth all the time all the time nope it just seems like nobody can get it right anything but the truth is what they preach anything but the truth so the Bible says there's going to be a great tribulation and immediately after the tribulation Jesus comes in the clouds of heaven well to hell with the Bible I'm gonna teach the opposite I'm gonna teach that Jesus comes before the tribulation first of all Christ will return and he will return in the clouds Right? When he returns in the clouds, this will be prior to the start of the tribulation. Unbelievable. Unbelievable. I don't know why people are confusing the tribulation with the wrath of God. It's not the same thing. If you're, if you're meaning the wrath of God, just say the wrath of God. If you're meaning the judgment of God, just say the judgment of God. Why confuse the wrath of God and the judgment of God, which is the same thing. Why confuse that with the tribulation? It's unbelievable. In the world, you shall have tribulation. These things have I spoken unto you, that in me ye might have peace. In the world, ye shall have tribulation. But be of good cheer. I have overcome the world. All right, that's enough. All right. If you can't get that one point right, it doesn't matter the rest. All right. Good day.